Good morning, it's Alexor again with another Q&A dev stream. Back with our great friend Mike over here and we have some interesting topics today. Now, 1.1 release was already announced. It's going to be on the 9th of July. This is when the next season starts. Um, and all the, the things are coming out. You already mentioned the Pinnacle Boss system and the uh, Evade mechanic and the Nemesis encounters and I'm sure much more. But there also were a bunch of interesting topics in this very stream he mentioned. For example, we're going to start with a banger right away with a class I was not expecting being possible. Again, I didn't say in the title that the new class is coming. I said the new class engineer is possible. All right, so be careful. A new faction is coming, so that's true, for sure. Going to go over this later as well. And a future setting might also be possible. Like we actually play in the future with like maybe cars and guns. If they will ever make it, we don't know. But the fact that they are not completely off of it is very interesting. So let's just let's just listen to what he has to say about the new class, classes that are maybe coming and what they will look like, etc. It isn't going to be added or worked on for a while, but once you guys start to work on it, what is a new class? Or what are or what new masteries that you would personally love to see added? This is the problem. So I'm, I'm not going to give you specifics. I'm not going to give you specifics because I do know what some of the first classes are going to be and they are the ones that I want to do in some cases. Um, I, I think the, the I think you can look at I think you'll see a mix of like um, oh they're finally adding that class and Oh my god, they're adding that class? Cool! Type reactions to the different types of classes that come in. And like, uh, oh, I never thought of a class like that. You know, I, I think there's going to be that, that sort of that spectrum that I hope you've come to expect from us. Um, I, I'd, I'd really like to see... I'd really like to target new um, like playstyle archetypes and thematic archetypes that we just don't have. I think there's some really obvious gaps in those. I'd probably be targeting specific uh, weapon types as uh, like thematic touchstones, but not exclusivities for new classes. Um, you know, like 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 go through um, other games <laughs> and other other RPGs and look at class archetypes that we don't have right now. Um, and those are all the games we grew up playing <laughs> and that we love. And that we we tend to draw inspiration from a lot just naturally because it's what we grew up playing. And you'll probably get a decent picture of some of the the themes at least and play styles that we're looking to in integrate. Uh, follow up question: Do you think with the theme of Ellie, a class like engineer or mechanic would ever be able to fit in? Yeah, I do. I do. I think there's, um, I think there's definitely room for. Uh, I think it would be, um. You know, we, we are. It's 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 definitely rooted in high fantasy, right? Um, but then we have this time travel mechanic that kind of kicks up the kicks up the what if mechanics, the what if factor. Um, like what if we just go to the future and you know get a bunch of technology? So it's it's hard to um, stick that high fantasy theme really close sometimes. Um, but there's. There's engineer style uh, classes and things like that in like D and D um, and Pathfinder and Magic and you know other um, other other sort of high fantasy themed uh, like adjacent style games have have those have those types of characters already. They've kind of already solved the like it's it's like a like a magical engineer like an artificer. Um, it's kind of how I think about artificers, which which might not be right, but I, like a magical engineer is kind of how I think about them. I think is a fully reasonable thing for us to add in. Um, you do like a like a tinkerer or something is like the base class, and you, know, you can you can. There's, there's, I think there's some cool places to go from there. So there you have it. Um, he actually said it's completely reasonable for them to add in a engineer or some sort of tinker class. So if it's completely reasonable, eventually they'll do that for sure. I mean, there is no, he actually didn't say that any new classes would be coming. And in recent 
Uh, recent streams, he also mentioned that there will no new, no, there will be no new classes in 1.1, not even new masteries. Apparently, this will only maybe happen at 1.3ish, so we still have a while until we get new classes. If we're thinking like two, three, four years in the game, much like the other, like Path of Exile, right, who has ten years of seasons, I could definitely see um, not just a tinker, but also maybe a future setting, right, where you actually have some sort of cycle. That is based in the future. Maybe with guns, even. I don't know. Um, which probably won't go to Legacy, but like, just for the cycle, you can actually play with crazy shit. That would be cool. I would enjoy that a lot. Or maybe in like, with, in like a city with skyscrapers or whatever. You're running around with your shield. That would look weird, but also it would be funny. So, but this is really something once you have the entire game flashed out and you have room to do shit you wanna, wanna have fun with, then this could come along. For now, it's not coming again. No new classes, but the fact that they are open to that, I thought would be was very interesting. That they are open to having a class that the, he said it's high fantasy, but they have to the time travel. So the what ifs are very big. So we, I guess, we can see some really cool, creative, crazy stuff in the future if um, if Last Epoch sticks around, which I'm sure it will be. So definitely prepare for some some crazy stuff. Maybe even some alien worlds. Because there is time travel and also, um, yeah, you can travel through locations all the time, right? Maybe. We don't know. But it's, I liked it a lot. It sounded cool. So let me know what you think in the comments, as always, with any of these things he says or I comment on. What you think of it? Would you enjoy running with a magical shield and necromancer minions through a city? And, I don't know, kicking dudes with guns or whatever. <laughs> Would that be funny? Tell me about it. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna hit some questions here. How are you feeling about the dodge button addition? So I'm gonna um, a request for everyone here. Because a lot of you are, are frequently in the, in the community. So a request from me to you. Um, if you are talking about the evade mechanic we're adding, please use the term evade and not dodge roll, if possible, or both. But um, we really wanna push the idea that this is, um, that it doesn't have iframes and um, the, the term dodge roll, I think, sort of implies that it has iframes. So I, so in order to make people not... Uh, so so if, if someone just, like, comes into the red, into red or comes into the forums and, like, checks it out and leaves, we want to make sure that it's that they, that, that, that information is understood. And it, it is really easy to explain what it is at a core um, by using the term dodge roll because it's a more common mechanic. And it's 99% that. Um, and, and we did put it on the... Uh, on the roadmap at in parentheses, and so it's it's a bit of a gray area. But let's let's try and get the let's try and get the term evade out there as the. He rambles on about this a little bit. Also, the fun fact is throughout the stream, he repeatedly calls it dodge, <laughs> uh, even though he says we should call it evade mechanic. But I get the point. It's apparently not exactly a dodge roll, like uh, in other games. Uh, it's sort of evade. It's really just from what I've seen. I'm going to show you also. In he actually showed how it looks in this video and goes into details. It's basically just a another traversal skill you can use at any time. Um, it's not really to, uh, like to dodge boss attacks or whatever. Yeah, like you can use it for that, but it's not triggered with the bosses. You can just dodge away. It's a short traversal skill that doesn't share the cooldown with other traversal skills. Uh, spacebar by default. There's I th you, you may have to reset your key bindings if you're already using defaults or something like that, or if you're using space for something else. Um, it's the the right face button on controller. Uh, it is it sits it sits on your action bar, so it doesn't or it sits by your by your town portal um, and menu buttons here near your mana, so it does not take up one of your action slots. Um, the cooldown is four seconds. You have two charges, um, so you can use it back to back in rapid succession, but then you have to wait four seconds for the first charge to come back and another four seconds for the second charge to come back. So you're using it twice every eight seconds. Roughly, um, and uh, it does get increased cooldown recovery speed, so that time goes down as you level up. Um, and it is affected by increased cooldown recovery speed stat. So if you have increased cooldown recovery speed, um, you can get it quite low. So we have details on if you're level 100. So he basically just keeps reading what the set is. So um, I'm just gonna accelerate this a little bit. The key things I think are um, cooldown is independent. It does independent it doesn't share it with your other traversal skills. Um, no skill tree. Apparently they were thinking about a skill tree for it, but um, they dropped it. So it's really just 
just your dodge roll, sorry, evade mechanic. Um, and also this was interesting. Evade may have triggers or other mechanics tied to them through items, other skills, passive trees, and possibly new sources in the future too. So they will be adding things that are in relation to the evade mechanic. So I'm guessing there will be some boss interactions that are not in the game yet and not when, when the evade mechanic comes out, but they are thinking about it. So it comes it becomes some sort of dodge draw eventually, I guess. <laughs> um yeah, that's pretty much it. So it's basically just as I said, and let's also show what it looks like. So this is a this is an average level 57 or 52, 52 character. Um I would guess I don't I should probably find out, but like I would guess they have in the range of like 30% to 50% increased movement speed. As you can see. Sorry, it keeps on. Basically, just a roll, a very short one also, and uh, the speed increases, but but that's about it. Also, he did say that it has flavor for the classes, so like the primalist does an actual just roll, but an old mage most likely won't just roll on the floor. He probably is going to make a short teleport or something. Um, so they are different for the classes, and they will, will keep this, because class identity, as they said before, is... Um, very important to them. So tell me what you think of this mechanic at all. I think it adds, I think actually I like it because then really any build right now needs some sort of traversal skill or movement ability, right? Especially to dodge boss attacks or whatever later in game. And this could for some builds potentially free that up so you can actually use it to specialize another build or use something else on your action bar. So I kind of like this additional traversal skill. Also, it has two charges so you can actually make some distance with it. Um, I like it a lot. Tell, you tell me what you like, if you like it or not. I can't talk today. I'm very sorry about it. I don't know why. Just the... Uh, yeah. Anyway, let's proceed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> regarding the, the end game Pinnacle Wasp next cycle, will there be anything exclusive items tied to them? And how do you account for the more casual player that might not be able to do Pinnacle Wasps? I hope there won't be too much fear of missing out involved. This is a trick. Tri this is a very tricky and delicate balance to achieve. I agree. Um, I don't think so. So, given the stats that we've looked at, um, with with our the like the players that we've uh, got in the game and and the, the stats on like um, who's killing which boss and all that sort of stuff. If we, um, I think there might be a little bit of a misconception, um, or mis. Uh, disagreement on like where the line on the term casual is if we're gonna like if we're like put a line on how far a character gets as like well anything that can't do this is casual anything that can do this is like hardcore or like try hard and then everyone who does this is like no lifing it if we're gonna put like lines on the progression map um like casual is probably like the, the line of like casual to to like a, a more of a try hard player is like did you complete the campaign or not like, <laughs> you know, uh, if we're still going to go for like extreme majority, like, did you complete a monolith map? Like, it, it, did you beat any timeline boss? You are still, you're, you're, you're like, you're way above 50%, I think. I, like, it's, it's just, I, I don't, I haven't seen those numbers exactly, but it, they're very, um, I do know that they're very lopsided in how far most people actually get into the end game. That's a key thing. Um, I just want to jump in there before he proceeds with it. Very key thing. He didn't. He said it's not the actual numbers, but the majority of people, like the casual players, the really the majority of the players, did not even complete a monolith map, meaning the end boss in that monolith, like the first one, the fall of the, the fall of the outcasts, right? Not even that. So people talking about two thousand corruption. A thousand corruption out here saying that the game dies without going into 2k corruption you are very wrong my friend and i knew this before but it's great to hear this from from the devs themselves the majority of people will most likely never even play to the last monolith map unless they actually and they said they will do it they change sort of the the leveling up phase um, from getting through the the first monolith to get to the empowered ones <clears throat> they will change this apparently but yeah just finishing the campaign is sort of the highest echelon for most people <laughs> and then you what level seven not even 70 like level 60 or something if i recall correctly 
Um, so you like most people will not even go to level 90 with their characters or even 80, right? So I think this is very important to know. So, but it's interesting with the pinnacle boss, which is apparently the strongest, or not apparently, it will be the strongest boss in the game. So if you're thinking tier four Jura, the pinnacle boss will be above that, okay? And I think it's a very small percentage of people who actually killed tier four Jura in the Temporal Sanctum dungeon. So um, I think not many people will actually kill the pinnacle boss, but let's hear what he has to say about it. I think there's a bit of a misconception there on how far it actually is. Um, but so we, people who are, uh, we're, we're designing the pinnacle content such that if you are like, I, maybe I don't have a long time to play every day, but like, I'm going to invest emotional or in intellectual energy in doing this. And like, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'll be able to get there eventually type thing. Um, it is designed as, you know, pinnacle content. So like, if you're not able to complete what's already there as extremely hard static content. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're going to have a really long uh, road ahead of you for, um, for completing the pinnacle boss, right? Like, cause the pinnacle boss is, is it's, it's a step up from T4 Jewel run. It is harder. You know, I, I, I think most people would be like, well, obviously, but a tiny percentage of players kill T4 Jewel run, right? So it's, um, it is tricky there. And so one of the things we're trying to do is have the entire, um, the entire content be have have different stages of achievements and accomplishments. So there are like the the the, the nemesis encounters tie into all of this, and um, that is one sort of stage of the accomplishments. Is you know like there's different stuff there that I can't talk about specifically, but like doing those things is part of the stages of accomplishments of these of this new content that's coming out. So there's stuff to do even if you're never going to hit, and there's and there's there's relevant rewards. For doing that content, even if you're never gonna make it to the pinnacle boss, that's just very awesome. Also interesting with the nemesis um, encounters being part of that pinnacle boss. I guess the nemesis is just gonna be like the shade of Oribis, a projection of your darkest self that is fighting you from a different time frame. So it's gonna be yourself, maybe like your very character fighting yourself. This is what I'm thinking this would be because it would make sense in the nemesis sort of thing. <clears throat> Fighting yourself, there, your, your dark self, sort of coming from a different time frame. But whatever. Interesting, you get rewards already at different stages of the boss. So he's going to have different stages um, you go through. And you can, I guess, pause in between and then proceed or whatever. It sounds like it because apparently there is not... You don't have to spend four hours to just get to the boss and kill it. But it's still also interesting what he said. If you can't go through the endgame content that is already there, you cannot do the pinnacle boss. So for many people, as I said, they will most likely not do it. They will watch it on stream with streamers doing it. Um, but getting there apparently is tough. You have to have at least, I guess, um, a build, a character that can do tier 4 Jura quite fine. Then you should be fine with the pinnacle boss. He said it's harder than tier 4 Jura, but not how much harder it actually is. But it is the pinnacle boss, so it makes a lot of sense. So... Um, Again, this is sort of the, the discrepancy most people don't realize. Most people, most players will not be able to kill that boss, but it's still important they add endgame content consistently with each patch they bring, because this is what keeps the game alive, right? This is what keeps people coming back. Even if you're never going to make it, you're just going to play your character again, or maybe make a new one, um, and you have to new, uh, make a new one in the cycle, but you're going to play that, and you might not even kill the pinnacle boss, but at least there is some incentive for you to come back. But I thought it was interesting. Most casual players will probably not be able to actually kill the pinnacle boss. Uh, the question is asking, is 1.4 the next time that new skills are going to come out? No, 1.4 is not the next time new skills are coming out. Um, 1.4, there is a significant change to the skill system. We're adding in a new piece to the skill system called skill sigils. Um, so that, that's going to that's gonna be an augment to the skill system overall. Um, but there are updates to the skills coming in 1.1. So... Uh, So he didn't specifically say that there will be new skills coming in like 1.2 or 1.3. He only said that it's not the, ne the next time isn't 1.4 when new skills will be coming. So that sort of implies it, but he didn't actually say it directly. So we got to keep this in mind. 
But also interesting, 1.1 will have skill updates. I mean, we knew this. There's going to be balanced changes. And he said there's no new skills coming. There is no new no reworks coming. But he also hinted at some new interactions. So I'm guessing maybe some new interactions between skills, maybe with items. We don't know. We'll see. But there's definitely new stuff coming, not just uh, like new skills will not be with, coming with 1.4. It will be earlier than that. Uh, I know you've talked about future factions being added before, but I'm wondering, what can you say about the future factions? Like, um, when and what they might may be. I'm also curious if you guys do a crafting guild, for example, would the XP be gained by breaking down armor or crafting, or would the XP still be gained through killing monsters? Um, so the, 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 the faction system as a whole, like, like how, how factions work overall, um, this like, yeah, there's, there's like, there's a progress or a reputation progress that unlocks, uh, different, different ranks that do different things as you go. Um, there's this, this favor that you generate by playing the game, um, or by some other method possibly too, but this, there's this favor that you generate and you spend favor on things in the faction, which grants you, grants you reputation in the faction, which grants you more stuff you get in the faction. That, that, that broad, that really broad definition, that's a faction for us. That's, that's as far as it goes. Every other thing is specific to um, whatever faction it is. Um, so we are looking to add in new categories of factions, um, and you'll see those quite soon, quite soon, um, where you'll see you'll see like another category here that's like some other faction that sits here on its own that doesn't have another faction to go up against type thing, and it, it's it's really just a way of using this structure to. Uh, clearly lay out progress in that system all right there it is confirmed a new faction will be coming and he said quite soon so i personally am actually guessing 1.1 because 1.2 will be in like six months almost at this point maybe five to six months that's almost half a year that's not quite soon is it quite soon is in one month one and a half months when 1.1 drops so there's going to be a new faction Pretty sure. I'm not 100% sure, but like 99%, obviously, by why, by how he phrased it. And it's not going to be in in contrast with the Circle of Fortune or the Merchant's Guild. It's going to be an extra faction you can also join, apparently. Whatever that might be, I have no idea what it could be. Let me know in the comments what you think, what that faction could be doing, what it could be about. I have no clue, but um, there is a new thing coming. So I guess you can have two factions you, you work with. And over the years, I guess there will be way more than that. Um, but interesting, yeah. Basically, new faction leaked. Awesome. And to finish it off, there is the leak of the new item, or one of the new items, rather, that will be coming with 1.1. Um, this, to me, looks like a, a needle, right? And like a, a string of void, or string of time. I don't know. Um, no idea what it could be. I don't think it's going to be like a staff, like a weapon. Doesn't really look like it to me. It's more, it looks more like a relic, honestly. Um... Yeah, but that's a new thing that's coming also with uh, 1.1. So that was it for, for how we go over this. There was a bunch of things you also mentioned. Set items. Um, it didn't really just say much other than that there won't be a legendary potential for the set items. They won't be doing that. They will look at a different version of making them more viable. They are weather, not they are shit pretty much. And they will be changing that. Not with 1.1 and it's not going to be LP. And he also mentioned just briefly on sort of a side note when he was talking about the evade mechanic that melee generally will get a buff through the evade mechanic. I wonder how this exactly works. I guess just because you can dodge roll so your, your melee attacks are more viable. Melee definitely desperately needs a buff in this game. It's so bad compared to all the other um, like ranged or even like magical spells and all that on minions. Melee still always feels underwhelming so definitely loving a buff on that. I mean, the, the changes, I'm sure, will be insane. There will be a lot of changes to the game in 1.1, balance-wise. Um, so there's going to be a lot we have to go over. Anyway, this was it for this stream this week. I'm going to see you next week. Let me know in the comments what you think of whatever he said and my thoughts on it and what happened. Also, make sure to like and subscribe. And as I said, I will see you next week with the next one until we get to 1.1. And then we just keep doing them because he does it any week anyway.